Hi everyone and welcome to Entrepreneurs Playing Games. My name is Amandine Flax. I am here with Safia Tapal, the founder of Talisman. And uh, Safia, before we start talking about you and what you're doing, I would just like to talk a bit about Entrepreneurs Playing Games because that's a, a very new concept. And we are just starting. That's the very first episode today. So the idea is to invite every two weeks on Saturday morning an entrepreneur to talk about the journey, what they are going through, and uh, also play some video games. So we are live on Twitch. If you're already here watching us, that means that you followed the link um, and you managed to find us on Twitch. That's great. And uh, uh, it's straightforward. It's very easy to use. But just so you know, we really want this session, this episode to be interactive. So feel free to ask us any question. I saw there are already some people on the chat. Uh, so you can use the chat box. And just so you know, if you're not familiar with Twitch, to ask us a question, you will just need to create an account. It takes a few minutes, it's completely free, but you know, if you have a really burning question, something you want to ask right now, and you're about to ask your question and you realize you don't have an account, it can be really, really frustrating. So I would recommend you to just register, it takes two minutes, and then you can ask, ask us anything. So uh, also, if you have to go at some point, or if you want to share the, uh, this episode with someone, that could benefit from it. Uh, we are going to upload the video on YouTube in the coming days. Uh, so it's not going to be immediately after the show, but uh, in the coming days. Uh, the description and the uh, link to the channel is going to be on the description of the channel. You can find it there. And uh, I think that's it for all the housekeeping okay. things. Um, the other thing is the way this episode is going to happen. We are going to first talk about you, Safia. And then we are going to um, have kind of a break, a fun break, where we're going to play some video games. Um, so if uh, we don't hear the sound of the video game right now, but people on the chat do hear the sound. Uh, so if you can recognize the game we're going to play, you are very good because it's not necessarily a very mainstream game. I don't think so. Um, oh, so, <laughs> yeah, you can hear the sound. I think it's just so you know, it's very cheering sound. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can see on the video later on, but uh, yeah, I don't know if it works really well with us talking about serious stuff, but <laughs> that can be fun. And uh, after that, we're going to get back to you and dig a bit more into your experience and what challenges you are facing. Perfect. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds great. So, let's get started. Um, Sophia, you are uh, you have a in very interesting background and experience. You have been working in, in many countries. You worked in um, in India, in China, in uh, Kenya, mm -hmm. in the US, and now you're based in the UK. Yeah. Am I missing anything? Uh, no, I grew up in Pakistan, so I should mention okay. Pakistan, but I haven't officially worked there. So, oh, but still, yeah, yeah. That's, that's impressive. You've oh. been traveling a lot. And uh, you worked in different spaces, mm -hmm. so you have been involved in fintech, um, you worked in a, a social investment mm -hmm. also, you mm -hmm. worked with foundation, and now you are launching your startup, uh, Talisman, yep. which is a main care product, right? Very good. Not Fantastic. Right. So tell us more about you and uh, what brought you to this path. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess my journey has been... Uh, I don't know. There's, there's always been a, a curiosity about the, ne the next thing, and then I sort of each step makes sense at the time. But um, looking, you can always only connect the dots looking back rather than looking forward. Um, so yeah, I was always motivated by this idea that I have a really privileged background, and I sort of wanted to give back. And so um, I was in the social entrepreneurship and impact investing space for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, and I was also, I mean, tech is really popular for everybody now, so I was <laughs> quite involved in tech. Um, but I think uh, I also really appreciate like nature-based or plant-based holistic solutions. Like mm -hmm. wild tech is on the rise, so are wellness trends that aren't necessarily aren't necessarily connected to tech. Um, and so I think they don't have to be two separate worlds. But I was motivated by kind of 
coming moving away from tech to be mm-hmm. quite frank um and so yeah T- talisman is as you said a men's personal care brand um very much lifestyle based sort of of course like putting a cream on your face is not going to solve all your problems it's about like a whole <laughs> i mean i wish but um, it's a start that it's a the start morning. that's the first thing you do in exactly the morning. exactly and I, you know i think once somebody sort of bought into the the idea that you can take care of yourself and feel better, then mm-hmm. you can talk about sleep, you can talk about anxiety. There's many different um, angles you can kind of address. Um, and so, yeah, that is kind of the genesis mm-hmm. of the brand. I and mean, the story is still, still evolving. It's it's pretty new. I started four months ago. Um, yeah, that's very new. Super new, but yeah. And what made you make the jump to start your own project? Because I think just before starting uh, Talisman, you were working in fintech, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what made you just decide one day to go from uh, working in a fintech company, um, B2B fintech, yep. to go to launch your own project yeah. in B2C, um, in, in kind of cosmetic, beauty yeah. product? No, yeah, it's a very good question. Um, I guess there's two things. One is just like a cumulative, cumulative buildup of... My mom was always like, you're really entrepreneurial, I think you should do your mm-hmm. own thing. And every time I had a either a happy or more often a frustrating moment at work, she would say, well, when you have your own company, like you can give everybody their day off on their birthday. And like, there's all these little things. She was like, just That's remember cute. it. And I have this little like, you know, on the back of my notebook, all these things that I was like, when I have my own company. So there's always been this idea that there's like entrepreneurial tendencies in my life and how mm-hmm. I operate. Um, but I think probably the moment is not very complicated. I applied for... Um, a, a visa in the UK that allows me to it's a tier one visa mm-hmm. so um, it allows me to, to be an entrepreneur um, the B2B to B2C switch and industry switch um, I'm not really sure there's no like direct link between the two I think um, I didn't want to work for a big company anymore and B2B is super interesting uh, but I think like you want to feel more connected to the thing you're doing and B2C mm-hmm. means like I can talk to you about a problem you have and address it right away rather than your, the company you work for. Um, and so I just, I felt like I could make like more of a change. And again, who knows, but mm-hmm. um, it felt like I could iterate more quickly and see the change right away rather than a really long sales cycle. And um, yeah, working with people rather than companies, which again, yeah, I'm not sure if that's true yet, but um, hmm. yeah. <laughs> we'll I guess it also depends on the company you're working with, right? So some companies yeah. are more close to the people and, and enables you to do more things, yeah. whether it's as, whatever the side. Yeah, sometime. no, that's definitely true. Um, I, I meet lots of people who want to be entrepreneur, and maybe some people watching us today are aspiring entrepreneurs, and lots of people ask me about the right moment, the moment where you feel it's the right time for you to get into your project full time or just get started. Mm. Uh, did you feel something specific? Um, like, did you feel at some point that, yeah, that was a moment, like three months ago, did you just think that's a moment to do it right now for some reason? Or was it just an accumulation of things, as you said, that led you um, to this? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think like the getting it. Anyway, in my personal, very specific experience, and I'm not, yeah, take it with a grain of salt, it's like you dip your toe in, you're like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and maybe you, like, register your company, you register the handles, (laughs) like, you know, everyone should do that, that's, like, super easy and doesn't take any emotional investment, Um, and so you try all these little baby things, and you're like, okay, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Um, I think there was no moment, per se, of, like, the, you know, light bulb, like, yes, I'm going to quit everything. I think it's more you, you do you sign up for one thing that's like super outside your comfort zone. So I signed up for a pop-up event and that was way too quick, like too soon. I do everything like super, super fast and it didn't almost give me any time. Like it's all self-doubt, right? That's the reason Mm -hmm. many of us, if financial constraints aside, it's like a self-doubt thing. So if you don't give yourself the choice of backing out, like, oh, I signed up for this, like for example, if this podcast was an example or sorry, this episode was an example, you know, it's a deadline. Like I cannot back out. I need to get all my shit together in order to do this. It's like, I don't have the time to think, Oh, um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so almost like trick yourself into not having an out option mm-hmm. in the beginning. And then the, hopefully the idea is it sort of snowballs and then you're in the groove and you've already mm-hmm. started. And then you've already told people you're doing this pop-up event. And then it's and, too late. Like it's already yeah. real without make you know, you didn't really have to say now it's real. But by these baby steps, it's actually getting really big. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think, I mean, I don't know. I definitely have imposter syndrome. I know a lot of people do. And okay. you know, it's. When when do you when can you even say you're an entrepreneur officially and <laughs> when do you change your LinkedIn and you know when do you say you're running a company like 
like technically yes but do you feel like you are and yeah so so i think that yeah, maybe takes time to grow into yeah. um but the actual act of like doing it i think you, you sort of set something that you cannot back out of and you've already forced yourself but like when you're scared do all the little stuff like admin registering <laughs> company you know uh, yeah. setting up your facebook account all of that it's it's kind of funny because it sounds like uh, the opposite of Faking it, can, faking it until you mm. make it because mm -hmm. everyone says oh yeah you need to fake it and then it will happen but it seems to be kind of the opposite like you're doing many things but it's not real yet and just it becomes but uh, kind of seems the way around a bit. yeah I, I don't know uh, when I have a, like applied for jobs before mm -hmm. then maybe there's an element of faking it till you make it like I do all my research and you know you listen to podcasts and you read up but you sort of have to almost feel overly confident when you apply for the job to convince them mm -hmm. but somehow this feels like it's like your own reputation on the line so it, it feels way scarier and, and way more risky almost because um, the, the, there's no net whereas if you apply for a job and don't get it like okay just apply for another job yeah. Um, and here you're almost naked. You're just explaining yeah. what you think, what you believe in. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, Every and time I hit the feedback directly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you you said that uh, you started three months ago, um, so that's very new. But in the meantime, you already have a store that is live on your website, so anyone can buy already your mm -hmm. product. Um, who did that? Who did you made everything possible in in just three months? Because you you already have your product ready uh, mm -hmm. for people to buy. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, there's definitely a balance between perfection and just getting stuff up there to get mm -hmm. feedback, and I struggle with that. Um, but I was told from the beginning by, like, friends, and, and again, it's interesting because they're friends mainly from tech, and that's a very different approach than a consumer product that's not tech, but everyone's like, just iterate. Like, you need to put stuff out mm -hmm. there, get feedback. And so there's, you know, the, if you visit the website, which maybe you if you'd like to, um, <laughs> it, it's Mr. Talis mrtalisman.com. It's not perfect and, and, you know, it might seem like it's not super, super professional. I didn't pay anyone. I built it myself. But at least then, like, I can get some feedback and mm -hmm. it, it's at a place where I'm okay. I'm not crazy uncomfortable with it. Um, so I think, yeah, the, the, the speed, which, again, I don't think it's fast. I think, like, there's so much more I should have done, obviously. <laughs> um, oh, but it's kind of like, do that so that you can at least get some feedback and then keep iterating rather than... Uh, I could have waited a year to launch, um, mm -hmm. but then what if zero people bought it and I needed to change everything? Um, I, I would prefer to put a little bit out, get some feedback, iterate, iterate. Yeah. Um, but you're creating a physical product, so yeah. um, there is generally uh, uh, generally people think that when you have to create something physical compared to uh, building a software solution, mm. it's uh, it's actually it takes a long time and it's a really heavy process. What did it go for you? What 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 did you approach building a physical product? That's a good point. Um, so I guess maybe this is a bit technical. The first product I have is is not water based, so actually it's a lot easier to get it into the market quicker. The testing is takes about four days. Um, so as long as you know I make everything at home in in a lab, formulate, um, send it to the lab for testing, and if it's approved, good to go. Mm -hmm. If it has water, then it takes a month to three months. Um, okay. But because I started with a product that is not water-based, um, it's really just me. I mean, there's other things, like you have to order the ingredients from different places. It comes, it's not that good. You have to order from other places. So it, it's not super, super fast. But um, yeah, you, you do have the ability to sort of go home, try something, give it to you. What do you think? Try it for a few days and do that with many, many of your friends mm -hmm. um, and then get the new version tested. And in terms of uh, regulation, because the cosmetic market is heavily regulated, yeah, yeah. so how do you navigate into this? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of resources online. Um, I use Oxford Biosciences. They have some information on their website, and then you can send the, the products mm -hmm. um, to their lab for testing. Okay. Um, yeah, the regulations around the world are very different between the UK, the US, and everywhere else. Um, UK is the hardest market, actually, to like put your products into. If you want to get things certified, <laughs> then the US is the hardest, but... To actually just sell something really, you know, from the beginning, the mm -hmm. UK is the hardest one. Why that? <clears throat> you have more steps to do, or are the uh, steps more complex to uh, to check? Um, you have to be more. Um, uh, how do I say it? Like you, you have to, yeah, you have to adhere to more regulatory standards in the beginning. Okay. Um, just to, like like, uh, like the labeling and sort of the even the certification, like things you have to include are a lot mm -hmm. more. Um, 
uh, like detailed than you would need to in the U.S. Okay. Um, but yeah, sorry, I forgot the beginning part of your question. Um, it, it was about uh, why in the U.K. it's uh, oh yeah more yeah impacts than in the U.S. Yeah, I mean. That. It, yeah, it's also tricky. Like, the, there's stats that say, you know, the UK has like a thousand different rules that you have to follow, and the US mm -hmm. has like three or 30. But, okay. But then it's like the UK, <laughs> in those rules, it includes like no radioactive activity, no radioactive particles. Like, the rules are crazy. Okay. Like, yeah, so it's it's all, I mean, anyway, it's, it's very, um, there's also a lot of greenwashing in the industry, and, you know, I'm still learning about like a lot of um, companies just use, uh, what's it called, like scare tactics kind of on their packaging or mm -hmm. they make false claims. And so there's just, like the regulation is catching up with that as well. Okay. Um, so I think that will be a slow movement, but yeah, it will it happen. Time. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you're already live for three months, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything has its own style. Yes, no, it's <laughs> very true. <laughs> um, you mentioned the, the market. Um, so you are targeting a very specific market the uh, men care product mm -hmm. and also offering a plant-based product mm -hmm. so um what is the market like for men care products um, i don't know much about it i just know what i see you know uh, in uh, boots yep. all kind of big uh, retailers and what is available is actually uh, the big brands that are yep. also targeting women but yep. they have a specific line for men yeah so it's like uh, the market for for men care right now yeah so um it's interesting the market is valued at 29 billion i think by the mm -hmm. end of this year and skincare is actually the fastest growing segment within the entire men's market so it's not uh you know body care or i don't know hair products it's mm -hmm. skincare um and yeah the one big bucket of the men's Uh, skincare products are like a Clinique, Clarence, Dove, Aveeno, Garnier that, you know, they, they were initially made for women and then they add the plus men and change the packaging a bit and probably the formulation a bit, but mm -hmm. men still feel like this is like a female brand that just made a men's line okay. um, rather than from the onset sort of being created for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's like more gender neutral brands like a Kiehl's or an Aesop. Um, gender neutral, I mean, sorry, offering both. Kiehl's offers both. Uh, Aesop is like more just gender neutral. Okay. Um, And then you do have a lot of um, smaller brands that are mm -hmm. now sort of curating their men's line and it's very niche and that's probably the bucket I currently fall into but I would like to be where the Aesop and the Kiehl's are so kind of um, d very designed so I have an example of my bottle um, spend yeah. a lot of effort on the packaging because I think everybody and men included care a lot about what's on their bathroom shelf as well yeah. now yeah now you kind of think of it as like not even if you're single, but you're, you're sort of proud about what you have on your shelf, and so you want it to be aesthetically pleasing. Um, if you want to use it also, because there are many men that, if you if you offer them something that is not for them necessarily, or they don't feel like they really are going to use it, so they are going to leave it on the shelf. Exactly, exactly. That's it. Like, oh yeah, that's not really for me, so it's, you know, yeah. I'll just put it there, and just in case one yes. day. <laughs> yeah, there's a huge, yeah, there's so much, like, interesting sort of information about men's behaviors around packaging, and yeah. smell and sort of if they think it's for them um and then yeah then the, i mean the other angle of the the whole market is also like packaging and um sustainability and recycling and mm -hmm. so this is made out of glass um i i'm still struggling a little bit with finding a very easy way to reuse the bottles because i i think recycling is sort of it becomes an afterthought and you don't actually care about what you're doing. So it's a bit of, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm really trying to reuse over recycle, like mm -hmm. buy something that I know I can then use for, you know, putting hand soap inside or something. Um, and so I still haven't cracked a way for, to have a small bottle because it's an oil and it, this takes six months to finish. Um, so it doesn't make sense to give people a bigger bottle, but yeah. um, to give them an easy uh, option for how to reuse the, the bottle. So um, I actually have a question. Um, From Eddie. Oh, Hi, Eddie. Uh, good to see you here. Um, Eddie is asking if uh, if it's expensive to get the product tested. Yeah, it's um, 150 pounds plus fat, so 180, mm -hmm. um, to do a non-water-based product, um, and it takes about three days. This is what the company I use. I think I think some do it for a lot cheaper, um, but if you're going to put it on the market and, and work with wholesalers, then you kind of want to have the best certification possible mm -hmm. um so in the grand scheme of things it's not crazy expensive but it is it is expensive enough that while i have like four products at home like a deodorant and a face wash that i've made and you know a couple of people like it it's too expensive for me to just get it certified so that i can sell it 
like on my website mm-hmm. I, I first feel like I need to do a ton of testing with friends and make sure I've iterated yeah. before I submit it um, and if you change something you do have to pay again mm-hmm. so if I change Makes one sense. yeah because if you get the certification and yeah. you add lots of bad things on it no but if you change but, even yeah. like a little bit like one you know the, the essential oils make up uh, like one percent of the product if I change <laughs> one of those or change the formulation a bit um, you have to pay again so again like if you don't like the smell yeah. and you want me to make it minty um, that's yeah it's like enough people I have to get enough data to support that before I pay again to get it tested makes sense and talking about testing um who did you approach this part of testing your product to iterate then afterward um have you approached uh, a specific like have you approached your friend first or have you just had a specific strategy to test mm. your idea yeah i mean it's yeah really top top of mind question i mean it's just user feedback right which yeah. is the most important thing but the it, hardest it to kind of get and so um yeah i i've struggled a little bit with like really sticking to the So I had a user persona, I defined him, he, mm-hmm. you know, I can describe him a little bit, he probably, he works, has some kind of disposable income, maybe works in tech, um, is quite active or interested in fitness, maybe curious about like plant-based diet or healthy eating. When he goes out at night, he wears like a blazer with a t-shirt, he's not super like stiff in his um, style, I suppose, uh, sort of uh, like woke male, I guess you could say, <laughs> like if his female friend talked about her period, he'd be fine. Um, that, that kind of a, a guy anyway so I had a, a like a user persona in mind but then when you meet people and they have all these opinions and they're a guy and you're like okay like are you now in my target audience so and mm. then you use his, his feedback um, which it's not necessarily the one you should listen to you should listen to the ones that like actually fit into your you know yes. your bucket and but so it's I, hard also to make an obstruction of this feedback because even if they're not your target audience it's a feedback yeah yeah it's just I don't know the like all the stuff I've read online, which again, you, everyone can form their own for their own path, and it doesn't have to look what I, like what people in the past have done. It's like um, you want to get the low hanging fruit first, which mm-hmm. is the guy who is in your user bucket, yeah. and then you know make him your early adopter, and then the other guy whose feedback is helpful, like wait till you're at the you know the, you've got the thing that's like ten ten other early adopters have approved. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I try to basically obviously use friends, friends of friends. I tried a couple of. Um, Uh, like whiskey tastings and so I would have mm-hmm. guys come over um, and you know uh, I think men also um, do a bit better in groups like where they piggyback off of each other and sort of uh, yeah like I'll ask them a question and another guy will say oh yeah yeah you're right and like mm. like a focus group style. exactly exactly okay, yeah. um, so I've tried some of those um, yeah again like I'm still working on um, finding the right incentives and also again the right people mm-hmm. to come because like your partner might be like oh yeah sure I'll help out like a friend of a friend but if he's not in the user if he's not in the target group it's helpful but not as helpful as it would be if you yeah. know so that's that's a struggle but something I'm very very um, like aware of and, and trying to kind of yeah and yeah. also sorry Instagram is actually a really one I'm like try to be super active on Instagram yeah. professionally personally my account is shit <laughs> last time I posted was ages ago yeah. um, but a lot of people contact me on Instagram and so I um, I end up setting up calls with ev- anyone who's contacts me and seems sort of legitimate and I just Mm -hmm. info interview them um okay that's good mainly they're not in London so we can't meet in person and there's a lot of really helpful feedback from the smell and you know Mm -hmm. how you feel the texture is but it's better than yeah you need to put in your at at least in your hands or on your face to be able to give a good feedback you can actually talk about your habits and many things but you can't really test a product no definitely so I try to use that type of feedback more for Mm -hmm. like branding and building like The, so I'm the I don't know if I missed I didn't mention this actually so the tagline of the company is there's more to him than meets the eye um, okay. and the idea is just like trying to overcome like body image body shape body ability body size sort of issues if you will and, mm-hmm. and um, encourage men to like expose the other sides of them um, and so there, I can get a lot of interesting insights from those conversations about the company brand but definitely the product yeah. it would be nice if it's a person <laughs> yeah. always better yeah. talking about uh, branding um, it's, it's very important for consumer goods um, and also to reach out to your audience you are very <laughs> active on Instagram and I really like that I've been following you for a couple of days or weeks now <laughs> since we spoke on the phone And uh, um, I, I, I thought it was very interesting. Um, so who do you approach, uh, who do you use Instagram to reach out to your audience directly? Do you have some tips, tricks to actually expand your branding and, and be able to reach out to these people? Because mm-hmm. I've seen, for example, you do lots of collaboration, mm-hmm. I've seen a few. 
And uh, looking at the fact that you were just three months old as a company, you already have lots of collaboration. Who did you just do yeah. that? Was it intentional or because you have already an existing network? You were tapping into that. Um, I have no network in the space. Uh, <laughs> okay. Like, my network would be in like fintech and impact investing, but it's funny. Like when I meet, meet people in this space, it's like zero LinkedIn connections, and I'm like, oh man. Whereas you know, yeah. you're used to like a couple, and you sort of, um, especially when you're in tech, you used to know everyone. Yeah, in yeah, your space and... yeah. It's yeah, very true. <laughs> um, yeah, collaborations. I think anyone I meet at an event, and often they're um, women founded events, mm-hmm. which is another whole topic I'm sure we'll discuss, yes. um, somebody who seems sort of interesting and has some connection, mm-hmm. then um, yeah, we would we'll just do a collaboration and I, I don't really feel the need yet, maybe in the future, to put any like real rules on the types of collaborations okay. or just whatever feels right right now because mm-hmm. I'm that tiny. Um, the other thing that is not really related to your question but made me think of, one of the things I love about doing my own thing is... Um, I'm just generally quite interested in many, many different topics and because it's my own company, but, and also because the approach is trying to be really a lot more holistic about men's personal care, not just, you know, beauty or like the science of your skin and Mm. the layers of the dermis and things like that. I can connect with any type of person or company. And so for collaborations, for example, like I have the ability to make the, like if you had, um... I don't know, a carpentry business, for example, mm-hmm. like we could make a connection and there's a way mm. to make it relevant to my, my user base, yeah. but you know, maybe down the line or maybe I hopefully not, but maybe down the line, it would be more difficult to make that sort of work. Um, mm-hmm. but now I think that's the beauty also of it. Like I can just, um, it's not random. I mean, yeah. I, I, there's no reason for me to do something super random. There's usually like a thoughtful reason behind it, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So I guess tips, um, I think, yeah, be open to collaborations that make sense for your brand and your strategy. Um, it took me a long time to, like, get around to posting every day. It's, I don't know, I probably spend too much time thinking about what to post. I'm not, I don't spend as much time just, like, scrolling. I just sure. try to be quite deliberate, um, invest in a good camera, uh, and a good lens, actually. That was the biggest tip. So I've archived some of them, but if you mm-hmm. go way to the bottom of the feed photos suck like they're just not very good uh and I tried I I made like a light box out of you know cardboard paper with the diffusion sheets and I really tried but they just don't work um so someone light also right yeah although this camera the lens I have it with me it just like makes everything look good Um, it's the brocade yeah I need to see that yeah I'll bring it out um I don't know yeah it just works and I enjoy taking photos a lot more and then I enjoy posting more um so yeah, I good camera. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, I, you know, there's like the normal tips which everybody tells you, which is like be engaged, use hashtags, yeah. you know, always respond Social to comments, media, yeah. um, normal stuff. Um, yeah, um, I also use later to plan my posts, mm-hmm. um, just one or two days in advance. That's another like. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's a debate, but some people like to plan like weeks or months in advance. Mm-hmm. Other people like to be more spontaneous. I'm more on the latter end. Like, I I like to when something comes to me, yeah, plan it a few hours in advance. Um, I'm, I do that um, on the morning. Every morning, I plan my Twitter head for the day. And, oh, that's really smart. And just on the morning, when I was working with different companies, I used to do it uh, uh, weekly. So on mm. the Monday, I was preparing a few things, not necessarily all the wordings, but at least the idea. Yeah, that's a... and then I was just adapting. Yeah, Twitter. I don't. That. I, under, I mean, I don't know how to use Twitter yet. I have two followers. So if you want to follow me, that'll make it three. Um, I've tried on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I'm trying to become more active, like posting articles and commenting. Mm-hmm. I think that's like a very underused tool. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying that. And then uh, I have a personal medium account, and I do blog on the website. But I don't think that's necessarily generating any traffic. So, but if you're blogging and and you don't necessarily put it on the website. And you're not on Twitter. Where do you share your, your post? Where can people find your blogs? Uh, so the, I do have a blog on the website. On the website. Yeah, okay. I have like a personal one that's... Because I think companies have Medium accounts. Mm-hmm. I don't yes. have a Medium account. I put the <laughs> blogs on my website. Um, okay. But I... That's another whole thing. Like, I, I think um, I need to drive traffic to the actual blog post to mm-hmm. see if people are even interested in the topic. So I, But now I've also... Maybe this is a good tip. I've come up with a list of like 12 blog posts. When I meet people who seem like they might be in my user group, I um, say, hey, which of these would you be interested in reading more about? And then I like track the one, like zero waste, for example. People seem to be super interested in mm-hmm. zero waste. So um, I started writing 
uh, a piece around that, and then maybe it's iterating on like the headline or something that will drive people to go to that. But um, now, only now, am I like asking people what do they want to read more about, and mm. then writing posts about that rather than what I think is important for them to know. Have you so. seen lots of people coming to your website and, and becoming a, a consumer? Um, based on, on, on this kind of traffic or on your Instagram post or uh, um, is it more right now still on the uh, one-to-one relations? Yeah, have? no traffic from the blog post. Okay. Zero. Okay. That's, again, I, I think like I need to spend more time figuring it out. Uh, most of the traffic comes from Instagram. Okay. Um, so I have uh, Facebook Pixel and Google Analytics mm -hmm. connected so I can sort of see. Um, I have a Clavio like email marketing um uh, thing set up um so yeah i'm trying to track when people um click on the yeah i'm, I'm still trying to figure out where the roadblock is but the conversion is quite low right now but there mm. is traffic to the website okay. so there's like 200 views a day of the website but then no purchases so i think there's like a potential point at which they're dropping off and i need to figure out where that is yeah definitely and uh, something that i find quite interesting i wanted to keep it for later on but As you talk, we're talking about Instagram, I'm thinking, well, let's do it now. Sure. Um, I saw a post, and uh, um, I'm wondering if I, if you don't mind if I actually read it. It's um, embarrassing for me, No, but okay. actually, no, because I find it extremely interesting. So you talked about uh, shipping fees, mm. and, um, um, and if you're on Instagram, I definitely recommend you to check out... Um, the uh, Instagram account. What's your handle? Um, Talisman Skincare. Talisman Skincare. Yeah, it's a, it's it's very interesting. Uh, pictures are very nice, as you said. You mm. take lots of time on that. But also, um, I spotted this this uh, post where you say, as a small business, we see both sides of the free shipping debate. We are consumers too, and uh, and I can't scroll down. Um, and I have to come to expect free next day shipping. While even the cheapest option as a business takes a few days and most certainly not free. And you say also there's often a hidden price we pay for convenience, which we only now starting to become aware of. So um, that's a very interesting thing. Do you think that uh, uh, as a small business, um, the habits or conditioning we have to ask Amazon to deliver in a few hours or on the evening, do you think <coughs> that it has a big impact on, on you as a small business? Yeah, it has a yeah. huge impact. Um, <sighs> Because that's the kind of thing you don't really expect to see. That's the kind of message you don't expect to see on Instagram first. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I don't think I use Instagram But I the love right that way. because I was thinking, <laughs> oh, that's, that's definitely right. And generally, when you're a buyer, you don't really think about that. You just want to buy a product from a company. And if you check out the social media, you expect to see lots of nice pictures. Mm -hmm. But that's interesting to see this side of the business too, because mm. it reminds people you are a small business. And, you know, if they are asking you to, uh, uh, to get the product in just a few hours and um, keeps you responsible for that, mm -hmm. um, they have to understand the big picture. Yeah, so I guess two things. One, even in posting this, I was thinking, am I trying to develop... Like, is the brand of my Instagram trying to share my business struggles or, like, you know, my entrepreneurial journey, mm -hmm. which this kind of falls into a bit. But then also, I was, I tried to be, like, um, some, someone once said, like, each post should have a very specific purpose. Like, it could just be, like, a nice picture to make someone feel good. That's enough. That's not, not a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be, like, trying to be thought-provoking or, or try to start a debate. So anyway, the, the angling of the post, yeah, I sometimes I'm like, is this really a good idea? <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, where do I start? I mean, uh, it's not just the money. It's also like, um, I think, uh, so there's an interesting thing in e-commerce and how you receive a package also. Like mm -hmm. when you order on Amazon, there's no delight. Like you, you, you know the thing you're getting, you open the thing, this is the thing. Whereas I think with e-com, people now either expect or are very delighted when it's a really nice box and you open it and it's like, you know, wrapped really nicely and mm -hmm. there's a little card that says like, oh, I'm indeed, oh, thank you so much for your purchase, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that, not only does that cost money, but it also like means that the way I wrap it, I don't know, it does it cannot go through the Royal Mail like letterhead thing. I need to pay mm. for the small parcel box and blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, it has been entirely designed and, and you have not robots managing warehouses. Exactly, have exactly. You behind it yeah. that have to work, uh, yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of, in like the indie beauty, mm -hmm. um, there's a, if anyone is in the 
consumer goods space. There's a newsletter called Beauty Independent, which I really like. Um, and so there's, they were talking about, um, do you build in the cost for shipping into your product or do you charge for shipping? And if you charge for shipping, it's probably going to be a barrier, so you won't get as many customers. But um, if it's built in, have you raised your prices then mm-hmm. to cover the shipping? So at the moment, I like eat the cost, basically. I haven't raised the pricing. I've okay. actually lowered the pricing. Um, I'm playing around with the pricing. Experimenting, that's great. Yeah, it's just like pricing, <laughs> it's like a number that you see, and you know, it's hard for yeah. someone to swallow like why a number has changed so much. Um, uh, but yeah, so it, it eats into my own costs. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it's more just yeah thinking about like what do you actually need the next day or in the next few hours versus what are you able to wait for. So for example, I really, really love books, um, and I love ordering books online specifically. And even with a book, like do I really need it that moment? Like I already have three that I haven't read, but it, and I'm looking at it, it's like prime next day yeah. or like, you know, now I've, what I started doing is I, I buy used books um, that have a little bit of shipping, mm-hmm. uh, but the cost is cheaper and it takes a couple more days. So okay. it's like psychologically yeah. difficult mm. to be honest. Like mm-hmm. it's like, oh, plus three, sixty five <laughs> shipping. But I'm like, I really like used books first of all, more than new. So yeah. that's like, the, but then um, am I okay waiting a few days? And I'm like, yes, I haven't finished this other book, so I should wait. Yeah. But but we, we are used to that. Like, we're getting more and more used to have things ASAP. I know, and that's the... But I, some things I don't know if we need ASAP, which is which, sort of... Yeah, I definitely doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, I personally don't mind waiting a bit for products, if, uh, especially if it comes from a, a small business. Mm. But what I don't like is when someone tells me it's going to take three days and it actually takes seven. Mm, I agree. I'm, I agree. I'm okay Expectation with seven, management. it's fine. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you take some arrangements. So you know you're going to be out and you ask your neighbors to pick yes. up something or you know, you, you ha- you're going to have a call. You know exactly at what time the uh, person for the uh, for the mail is coming. Mm-hmm. So you try to move your call or something. And uh, and yeah, it's just expectation. Um, There's so also like all the costs about, I mean, all the... Uh, the, the, the idea that also like the packaging like to put something in a thing you're using that packaging whereas if you came to the store mm-hmm. it doesn't need to, I mean I don't have a store but if if like independent retailers are I think play a really important part because they stock small brands yeah. um, and so you probably might even enjoy going to the shop more to buy this rather than getting in the mail like you might experience it more you might you know mm-hmm. be able to smell it or have a choice um, and you might be willing to make the trip to yeah. this part of London to get it um, and then, you know, you don't have extra packaging that you have to throw away and I don't have to give you the packaging. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also when you, <clears throat> when, when something is being delivered, like there is a big, like carbon footprint, which we don't really that's think right, about, yeah. to be honest. We like, don't think about that. I don't think any of us think about it. Yeah, yeah. Even flights, like when things are, you know, next day from overseas, it's mm-hmm. brought over by a plane. Like, I don't think about that. I'm going to be lying <laughs> if I say I actually care, but because but, I'm a business yeah. owner, I do care now. Um, it's funny actually uh, because you see it now when you are just a consumer on the other side yeah um, I um, I don't know if anyone knows do you know Native it's a deodorant brand no. oh, it's quite interesting um, the founder also Pakistani a year and a half he had a different brand uh, mm-hmm. so he was already successful had money cash um, he started this deodorant company natural no aluminum blah 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 a year and a half after he started he sold to PNG for 100 million okay. um, so it's quite interesting and they're a digitally native direct to consumer brand if I do wholesale I won't be that um, anyway so I ordered one of his I was looking at his website I really like it ordered a deodorant yesterday um, it was nine, twelve dollars so okay. and I think there was a discount and then it was free international shipping and I clicked on it and I just thought it was really interesting I was like where <laughs> how is this how is this working and not even how like I understand how but is it worth it is it I don't know like who should pay also the cost that's another thing should he pay for it should I pay for it yeah. if it wasn't free um, Once you're in the business, you get to think about all this. Yes, I think about everything. <laughs> and I actually, it's like really nice because then I can ask those questions, but it's also stressful. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, that was no, a lot no, of talk. That's great. That's great. Yeah, we've been that. speaking for a while and now I think it's time to get to the fun part. I'm sure. Some video games. Okay. But it's a fun part for me. I don't know for you, but yeah, we'll uh, see. just getting the controllers on. So, we are playing a game today that is called Guacamole. Um, I don't know if you know this game. Nope. Um, great. It's, um, well, it's, a, a, it's hard to describe. <laughs> it's very hard to describe. Um, basically, I'm just launching the game. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a puzzle, nice... Um, 
nice game, very colorful game. Um, from the from the images I saw first before playing the game, I was thinking, oh, it's kind of a fighting game, mm. bit and more game, but it's not. Okay, it's actually very funny. Um, so you or we we are Juan, okay. um, a normal guy, very normal guy, and one day in his village, someone a, a very bad person attacks the village, um, and um, he kind of spread lots of skeleton people that are, you have to fight for sure but mm. it's 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 okay it's not very uh, uh very hard or anything but the fun part is that uh you have to kind of follow him to uh, follow his trace to uh, get revenge but also he kidnapped your crush so you have a crush on a lady <laughs> and he kidnapped her uh which is a, a uh, you know, kind of a more you thing, but you're going to follow him and uh, to try to find your crush. Okay. And the thing is, when you're wandering around in the city after this uh, uh, very bad person came, you find out a mask. Because you're just one, a very normal guy. You don't have anything special. And you find this mask and you become uh, a luchador. So you get the, uh, some powers, some abilities, especially abilities to fight. And that's where we are in the game. We just found out the mask. And okay. now, thanks to these abilities, uh, we'll be able to uh, just uh, get on, on the game. So I'm just going to get rid of the first person so we can actually start and you can play around with the controls and get familiar with it. Okay. Um, so, I'm just going to move this guy because it's annoying to be able to chat and, you know, and having just someone attacking you. So this is you okay. and I'm going to press and to get my own person. So, up. what happened in this game is when you have two, um, two characters, mm -hmm. um, if one of us dies, it becomes this kind of energy ball mm. and, and the other have to just kick it and the second player appears. Oh, okay, okay. So, I am the, uh, uh, the lady in pink. And uh, it's very easy controls for now because that's the beginning of the game. Okay. Um, so, you jump with A. You fight with uh, X. Okay. Um, with Y, you, you can actually push people away. Oh, okay. Um, but not you, obviously. No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> you were trying to push me away. <laughs> well, clearly, I have no experience with video games. <laughs> uh, you can move around with the uh, analogic skid stick, which okay. uh, uh, works slightly different for me. And uh, and that's it. For now, B doesn't do anything. You can roll uh, when if you use this uh, okay. this one. Uh, you can roll on the side. Mm, okay. um, and I think that's it. Okay. Um, just before we get started, um, I just want to say hi to Secret On, Secret O N from Russia. So hi, hi. welcome from U from Russia. We are actually in the UK. And um, I see the chat is a bit active, so thank you very much, Eddie, for answering some question from the chat. Um, some people are just joining us and asking some question about what you do. Mm. So um, very good. <coughs> let's uh, let's get started okay. and, and uh, kick some uh, skeletons ass. <laughs> so uh, we are just going to the church, and uh, uh, we had a tip. Someone told us that uh, uh, some people from the village are stuck in the church. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to the church, and then we'd get into our journey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Oops. let's go. I think the church is this way. Um, that, Oops. <laughs> yeah, you're getting. Does that so just slow me down, see. or do I have a life I lose? You have a life on the on the top. Oh crap! Let me see. I thought we were going to go to the uh, uh, to the church. We have to go there where the uh, uh, the glowing person is. Okay. And we are quite far away, I think. So let's uh, let's just try to go there. Oops. So I have no idea where we're going. I just tested the game really quickly. Oh, down? you need to uh, to press to go down, when in oh. to jump, like press down and jump, okay. and and you go down. Oh, okay. It's a bit confusing okay, this. Um, but yeah, it, it took me a while to find out. I was thinking, oh, I can't I can't go down. And I'm dead. <laughs> it's very hard to play together when you are when you are several persons, um, because of the screen. I think you need to go to the platform on the side mm. to be able to go up. And I am appearing up here. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> I was trying to push him. Something happened. Oh, I need to do something to get you alive, right? Yeah, you just need to kick the ball. Okay. Like, his energy. Fantastic. And I can help up with this one. What do we do to him? <laughs> How do we get him? Um, oh, you pushed him. Yeah, I just I just tried. I just kicked him. You can or not. It's up to you. Oh, yeah, it's this one is gone. Uh, you, what? Yeah, okay. Where are we? <laughs> we, you got us into the into the house, but I don't know where you are. We just both died. <laughs> this is so funny. Yeah, we're so, it's it's very different to play with someone else. Um, Sorry. No, that's good actually. It's very it's very good. So I think we're just going. We're supposed to go this way, just on the on the left. Are these bones? Oh, they're bones. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Which makes sense because yeah. they're all skeletons. Okay. So skeletons. And Sorry, I'm bones. having a hard time jumping. Coming. That's fine. Oh god. Oh god, I got I got some of them. <laughs> I'll just wait here. Oh no! <laughs> you have another coming on the other side. Okay, I tried to get rid of the one on the on the bottom. Okay, let's let's try to Should I go? Should side. I come with you? Yeah. Um so we found the mask on this statue actually and uh when I found the mask, my character appeared. Um I think she's supposed to be Ooh, can okay. we can we go down up? I think she's supposed to be an important character later on. Oh, I think we found this this church. But I'm not going to reveal anything because uh First, I don't really know much about this character. Okay. Um, I'll just so you're that the one you are right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just so that uh, she kind of have a, a secret story. Uh, it's not just the skin of the second player, but okay. she actually comes to play into the game. But mm. I don't know because I haven't played that much. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's get into the church. Are you ready? Sure. I think there will be lots of skeletons in the church. Okay. We just punch them and push. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we have someone that uh, is stuck over there. Oh, the bear guy? Yeah. I think he's like a religious man. I don't know what he's doing, but the, uh, uh, the dialogues are very funny in this game. Like he says, they locked all the tones folks in the water closet. Okay. okay and we have this? people there saying, hey, come to help us. Um, oh, and there are more. Ooh, there are more skeletons ah! and I'm dead. You have to leave at least 10 seconds. Otherwise, we will start from the, from the beginning. Oh, okay. So should I just... Oh, oh, oh I understand. Yeah, I want one... Oh, they can do... <laughs> oh, I have to jump when that happens. Or no? no? Oh, actually, we're starting just here, so that's fine. Okay, let's, let's see. I'm not also used to this controller, so it's odd. I'm, I'm making lots of mistakes. I'm very bad. I'm not good at games this early, but what are you I'm, talking I'm better about? than You're that. So oh my god, he's he's a ghost. Oh. Don't let it hit you. Roll into the end of its swipe attack. Roll. They were saying some in instruction up at the top. I don't know what they're saying. We're supposed to roll. I'm rolling, I'm rolling. So we're supposed to roll to avoid the attack. Fine. But then... This guy is not doing anything. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> ah! <laughs> So I think we're just supposed to to uh, uh, avoid this one. Roll into the end of its swipe attack. Okay, I think we're just supposed... To, it's like a tutorial moment where we're just supposed to uh, keep rolling when we pass him and that's it. So we can go to the next step, just rolling. Oh, I think that's it? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, this was most fast. I think that's the thing of the uh, yellow one, the the uh, green one or the normal one. The yellow are very fast. But we got it. Yay. We saved the day. Ooh, and we got some money. I don't know why when you kick skeleton you get money. Oh, okay. But that's an interesting concept. That is interesting. <laughs> um, so now we can help them. Okay. Oh. Why? So what did he say? Is it I have to my glasses? You. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I just course, realized yeah. I didn't really see. No problem. Okay. Hi everyone who joined us. That the funny thing, we have more people now that we're playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> that's telling. That, that's Twitch, right? Um, 
it's quite interesting with this format, like with entrepreneurs playing games. I try to bring two communities together, yeah. like the people from the startup scene and the Twitch people who are more uh, gaming mm -hmm. uh, communities. So yeah, that's an interesting thing. <laughs> but hi everyone who join us. Hello. Ready? Classes on. It's uh, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. The, the are, are rolled up. So. Just put my hair up. Okay. <laughs> ready? Yeah. <laughs> So, what okay. did you say? I can't thank you enough for what you've done here today. Still worry for the safety of El Presidente and his family. Okay. So, um, our crush is El Presidente daughter. Ah, That's got why it. Okay. Um, he's talking about El Presidente. Okay. Um, look for clues in Santa Lucida, and I think some of the evil escalators were headed that way. There is a bit mix of uh, uh, Spanish. Oh, that's words. okay, I studied Spanish, so. <laughs> Godspeed. I got speed the shadow. Oh, good. The world is in need of my help. That's right. Yeah. Great. We have a big mission here. So, we are supposed to go to Santa Lucia. Okay. Lucia. And I don't know where it is. What I like about this game is um, all the funny uh, dialogues. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so this way is the Presidente's mansion. So, we don't so I think we go the other way. Okay. Um, they always have fun stories, like if if we enter a random house, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see people aren't just saying things, like if we try to talk to this lady, for example, she say hola, and uh, I will... Oh. You? Yeah? Sorry. Mysterious papacito. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Sometimes you meet people who ask you some quests. Or, but the quests are like, oh, find me some tortilla. Uh, <laughs> like, well, okay. That's so funny. So, okay. we are supposed to find Santa Lucia. Thank you so much. By the way, come to my Lucia. <laughs> Wink. She winked at us. Again. <laughs> what does it... She wants us to come to, to her party. Yeah, but two winks. Does it have any meaning? Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. Um, so, it's not... Forest. Where are we going? I'm, I'm going to check out the map. So we have to go over there. Traverse the forest to get to Santa Lucida. Mm. So we get to to go up oh, yeah, to the okay. forest. Yes. Oh yeah. That this way. Okay, I like the uh, the colors of this game. Yeah. Like it's very cool. Oh, forest! That's what perfect. We're... Yeah. Do you play lots of games? No, uh, board games, not video board games. games. Yeah. Okay. I love board games. Oh, nice. But do you have like a, a group of friends you're meeting regularly yes. to play with? Yeah. We always like. I don't play that much board game actually. I think in the UK, what I I like to see in pubs when you have. Like lots of board games available. Mm. Um, I find it so cozy and so I agree. welcoming. You know, you just order a beer and if you're with some friends, you can be like, oh, well, let's play a game. It's, no, I totally agree. I don't do it generally, but I see so many <laughs> But you like the idea of it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, oh wow, they were good. I've managed to push us at the same time. The worst uh, skeletons it. are the red one because oh. they, uh, they send some bones. So what kind of board game are you playing? Is there any type? Um, you taboo, I really like. Okay. Uh, categories, like more like talking games or like, um, okay, like, like you when your mind has something. to work really quickly. Okay. Um, like associations. Ooh, this one is fast. I think I'm getting who I am. I, I think I think I'm you sometimes. That's my <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, they killed us. I was thinking just at the beginning as a forest, but that's okay. And then we're chatting, so it's a very cool one. Just so everyone knows, we're not trying to break any records here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Just having some fun in the middle of the interview. Um, When, uh, when I play with my partner some games, um, I always have this thing where I always think I am him. 
I'm, well, this character. Same. And uh, and I'm so bad. And every time he's like, no, you're the other one. Stop. Where are you going? <laughs> yeah. I'm just so bad at that. I find it easier when you have uh, sometimes uh, split screens. Oh, that's a good. So there is like no Eddie, confusing. Like any problems. <laughs> oh god, who am I? Okay, now I know who I am. Oh. Okay. Six hits. I think we, we killed six skeletons. Or just kill one in six hits. Oh uh, no, they just for one. Okay. Ooh. I think that's kind of a boss. Stop right here, Luchado. Orders of, of Carlos Calaca. Oh, Calaca is uh, the bad person. Mm. I didn't remember his name, but okay. now that I see it. Yeah, that's Calaca. I warn you, take one more step and it will be your demise. I don't even know if I should pronounce demise this way. What? What's that? You want to know who I am? Do you want to know who he is? Yeah, sure. Yeah? He's like a big... Like a... a I don't know, a tiger? No, it's not a tiger. He seems like an honorable luchador. So I will answer your question. We haven't asked any question yet. <laughs> My name is oh. Jag... Oh, it's really hard to pronounce. Who do you, would you pronounce his name? Javier. Javier. Or yeah. Jaguar Javier. Jaguar Javier. Because I'm French and yeah. there are many names like when they have different uh, consonants. I don't know if I should pronounce it the with the French accent because in my head I always pronounce the name yeah, with the French accent. Yeah, I think you can talk about with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was once human like you. In my youth, I lived and trained in this very you wood. I became a mythical warrior, serving noble kings and leading great armies to victory. But that was a long time ago. Now I serve Kaleka. So he's a bad guy, which is a shame. Yeah. He, he could be in our side. The final days of hers are you burn us. I suggest you return home and spend them oh. with the one you love. I wanna find my crush. But where yeah, exactly, that's a thing. So stubborn this one Luchado, you save the church and admirable and heroic feat. But your journey ends here. Okay. It pains me to unceremoniously it's a terrible word. Dispatch a warrior such as yourself. But you can't say I didn't warn you. Okay. Oh. Ooh. He warned us. Yeah. He is big. I'm glad we uh, we didn't have to fight him. So all we can go is on the side and try to find our way in a different way. Uh, oh, you, we have some indication here to. Uh, no, you did the right thing. Oh. Yeah, uh -huh. you can. You, you have the red spike and. As in all video oh, games. Oh, I see. Yeah, you can touch the red spike. So you have indication here. All A, A for long, long jam. Oops. Okay, let's start here. Yeah, you got it. And then tap A to hop. So a really quick jump. What is that? Oops. It's it's a huge. Hey, dude. Use. L T or R to roll. Yeah, we already seen how to roll, so we just need to roll to be able to pass the spike. Alright. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't have a different controller, it's somewhere else. Okay, so now we have to roll while we are jumping to pass the big spike. Let's see, I missed. <laughs> okay. Is there a roll or just a jump? Well, I think it's it's like we're pressing the uh, roll button, but okay. we are rolling jumping, so we can't really roll jumping. Got it. The animation is slightly different. Um, I like the beginning of the games when you have the tutorials, it's really not too Sorry. hard. I mean, you have some, some, some people to fight, but it's not just about, you know, we can have a chat and still learn to play. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> How did you do that? Um, it's uh, it the one for two roll. And yeah, A. When you are jumping, so A and this one. Doing that. Like at the same time. It's it's very hard. It's not easy <laughs> to do. You're dead! Sorry! No, that's fine. We just have to wait um, 10 seconds now. Mm. You have the country on the top. Oh, 
and you have to. Oh, do you're it. right here. Yes. Up and you're back. Perfect. Okay. What what just happened? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. So we are in a fight mode. When the uh, when the sides are changing, like we can't escape, that means that things are getting serious. Mm -hmm. All video games, like I can imagine, there is a slightly different music. Oh yeah. Um, but we don't hear the music. So <laughs> also we uh, we speak when there are some dialogues, but um, people in the chat also don't hear the dialogues. I mean, they just hear us. There is no one, no voiceover in the game. Oh oh my god! How many guys are there? Now? There are many. Yeah. But that's manageable. I mean, that's that would be fine. That not necessarily is the uh, uh, smartest uh, characters. Who is? Oh, it's a uh, it's a uh, piña colada. You know. <laughs> is it a piña colada? No. No, a piñata. Piñata. Oh, that's really cute. <laughs> that's a drink. I wish it was a piña colada. Yeah. I wouldn't mind right now. You're right. Stupid me. I'm a little creative if you want. I think uh, we're going to get some surprises on it. Okay, how, how do we do it? Uh, just jumping and kick. Um, yeah. Okay. We got more money, some silver, and some stuff. I don't really know what it is. But uh, I think there are some uh, kind of uh, hotels, you know, uh, where you can buy some stuff, like religious things where you can buy stuff at some point. Wait, yeah, these kind of things. I think there you can buy stuff, but what up, man? Like no. abilities or costume, but we don't really care about that. I don't think we have enough money right now. Mm. Okay, so again, some spike to go through. Almost did it. <laughs> oh. oh shit, we did it. Man. And then there are three of them. Okay, we did it. That's fine. Yeah. I think yeah, later in the game, uh, here we, we can see the big blocks of the red and earlier there were some big uh, 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 like green or, or oh, other mm -hmm. kind of blocks. And I think um, as we go in the game, we can um, we can do some things about that. So there is a house, I guess we can go there. Um, well, there is nothing to do in this house, fine, okay. Um, I remember this part, it's a funny part. Do you want to kick the big statue? You can kick. Okay. That's that's kind of that's kind of funny. <laughs> so the so goat is speaking to us. What you crazy little other? Why you gotta go and break my chozo statue? I have no idea how to pronounce that. But I can't remember. <laughs> I've only got like fifteen of these things left. Typical little other. Punch first and ask question <laughs> never. And then it becomes a really old grumpy guy. Mm. Um, <laughs> of course, we need a guy in a video game. Um, so, behold, I am the great Wei Chivo, Lord of all man goats. Oh. Is that serious? He is a man goat. Warrior, trainer, extraordinaire, and king of all court punishments. Now, before we begin, tell me is your mother single? Does she have a type? <laughs> what? Does she like bad boy? <laughs> he's <laughs> supposed to be a bad boy. Like you can imagine this old person. I think it's because like, he's a god. Oh. He's like bad. Oh bah. yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. Explain to me how you got here and don't skimp out on anything. Especially how you got that mask. So apparently <laughs> we just uh, told him the story, I guess. So Kalaka, the temple, and Presidente's daughter, and Shaiguo Ravier, my former student. Oh. oh, that's why he's badass. He had a man goat yeah. as a teacher. Um, I just have to ask your mother out <laughs> after we save the world. <laughs> I don't even know. I, I did the beginning of the game. There were no mention of her mother. Like I don't even know. Oh. <laughs> Maybe she will appear at some point. I don't know. First, we must train you in the art of a true luchador. Okay. The statue you just broke contained a magical power. Okay, so we need to press up. So just up and B. 
Okay, so we can break red blocks, but careful, if you use it too much, you'll tire yourself out for a while. So what about we just, um, oh, you work on that move, kiddo. If it doesn't kill you, we'll continue your training next time we meet. Okay. Ooh, we got a new move. So what about we try this new move and then we get back with the interview. Sure. Uh, sounds good. So, uh, what do we... Okay, so I think we need to use this new move to move this block. So, mm. um, it's like up oh. and B. You did it. That's perfect. Yes. Yeah. Nice. And then we can move up this way. That's good. Well, you get up there. Well, you, you do this new move while you jump. So you jump and then you do the uh, up B. So up. Oh, you're, you're running out of too low. Right? Um, I don't know. Just up, up and Oh, B. okay. Like, I understand. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Great. Well, we've played for quite a while now. Maybe 15, 20 minutes. Sounds good to go back yeah. to the interview. Yeah, fun game. Thank you. Great. And, uh, and uh, I guess I can quit here. I'm going to save. I can't save. Okay, <laughs> fine. Well, we'll uh, we'll keep the uh, the, play, the game. Uh, let's see. Okay. Hop. Cool. And now uh, we're back. Large. So it was quite interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like how this breaks the interview. And now, uh, well, we were already quite relaxed. So yeah. I don't I don't think it really helped make us more relaxed. It's still fun. But yeah. it's still a good a yeah. good break. Um, so we talk about many things, um, and something we uh, we talk about when we had a chat um, uh, on the phone before um, is that you are a woman, mm -hmm. and uh, well, yeah, and uh, you are working on a product for men, mm -hmm. and uh, um, you told me that it it can be tricky for you to position yourself because of your audience and. Uh, I, do you want to tell us more about that? How you how you feel about about this situation? If you had any comment from people, or if you actually put in the highlight the fact that you are a woman um, working in this, like it, it it is kind of a woman's space. Generally, yeah. we uh, it's it's not good to give spaces genders, but generally when we talk about cosmetics and skincare, yeah. there are lots of women because women are the main audience for mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But your audience actually made of men. So how do you uh, approach that? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so when I first started, I didn't reveal my, I didn't explicitly say whether I was a man or a woman. I <laughs> struggled a bit with tone of voice. Like, do I talk as you or as us? And, mm -hmm. you know, in my copy, uh, even on my Instagram, maybe I, I didn't know what I should do. And then a couple of people said, you know, maybe don't say anything. Like, let people assume you're a man. Don't highlight that you're female. First, try to be an expert. Um, but it's hard to hear that, right? Well, I guess so. I mean, the reason it was hard is because I'm trying to build the brand on like a pillar of authenticity, whatever that means. And so <laughs> it doesn't mean like I'm not lying, but I try, I don't know. I, yeah, you're, you're withholding information, um, not in a malicious way at all. But mm. um, yeah, I think that was tricky. Um, and then maybe a few weeks ago, I spoke with an executive at Unilever um, mm -hmm. and she actually said like just own it kind of you don't have to make it like so it doesn't have to be a usp of the brand that it started by a woman but um yeah just yeah you say, nothing, nothing to be ashamed of not yeah, yeah i think it was more that maybe the perception of men would be what do you know about my kind of why what do you know about my skin type why would mm -hmm. i buy from you um and so yeah i had um it took a while and then actually now that i have sort of revealed it uh, on international women's day i wrote a post on my instagram in which um i also struggle between uh, there's a quote by Sheryl sandberg i put as the post, which was, in the future, female leaders will be just leaders. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm on, well, it's, I'm on like the fence about how I feel about that because I think there's something to be celebrated about being a minority or, or you know, something unique, like you're a, maybe a French entrepreneur. I don't know if you say that. There's something to be celebrated about the fact that, th that there's the categorization. Mm. But on the other hand, you sort of want to just be seen as a person who happens to be a woman, which yeah. means maybe you don't want the female to be said. So... I think for now, um, I've chosen, and I, I'm a lot happier, I suppose, um, just to kind of, again, it, the, the branding of the, the, 
the company won't necessarily be think of me, you know, think of the company like your best girlfriend or your wife or your, you know, sister or something. It'll just be what it is now. But mm -hmm. um, the founder story, maybe I'll be a bit more explicit about the fact that I'm a woman and why I started this for men. Um, and hopefully also sort of shed light on how if a man says that he's starting a bra company or a female shoe company, we wouldn't really blink twice. And so maybe um, we can sort of get to that point with women, but also celebrate the unique things mm. they bring by being a woman. Um, well, there are actually lots of men um, at the top of uh, uh, companies targeting men. women. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think Revlon this week has named um, its first woman CEO. Um, I think I've seen an article about Hood? that. Uh, Revlon. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And uh, and yeah, that that's a surprise actually. <laughs> that for for the first time there was a woman at the head of this company targeting, I think almost only women. I don't think they're doing much for men. But I mean, I, I think, think the the argument which I don't agree with would be it's a business and men run businesses, so it doesn't matter what it's doing. It's a business, mm -hmm. and the content is just you can hire people who know the content, but yeah. the way it's running, and, and that's that's a whole interesting thing, and you know. Uh, even like I did my MBA four years ago and mm -hmm. um, many, uh, I don't know if it happened to me. No, I'm not sure if it happened to me, but many, no, it didn't happen to me. Many friends who were female, their people would, at a new event, people would say, oh, whose partner are you? Like, as a woman, you oh, couldn't really? be a student, you had to be a partner of somebody. That's so odd. There's so many, yeah, I mean, and it sort of fits along that side of like a business, of course, it's run by a man. Like, you, why would you be mm -hmm. doing a master's in business? Like, you don't know what it means to run a business. Um, wow. And obviously, like, you internalize those doubts as well, and you think, oh, you know, do people just talk to me because I'm a girl, or, you know, mm. is there any actual, like, um, do I have any hard skills? Am I just seen as, like, you know, somebody who's, like, really soft, and, um, yeah. So there's a lot. Yes, a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't expect No, that's that. good. I think it's a, it's a good moment. That The second part of the interview, where it's good to just talk about this kind of, it's getting more personal, but I think... Anyway, running a business, especially when you're just getting started, uh, it, it is personal. So yeah. it has everything to do with the founders, uh, their own stories and, and the small things they're facing. We're not talking about cooperation with yeah. hundreds of people on it, uh, where, you know, if you say something about the company, well, it's just the company. Yeah. It doesn't affect people individually, necessarily. Yeah. Even if I think in the fact there are lots of people that are still affected, but mm -hmm. it's not the same. When you're talking to a small business and a small business entrepreneur, everything you say actually gets personal. Yeah, that's very so true. It's different. Yeah. Do you think, um, have you had any, any feedback from the people you uh, uh, approach potential customers uh, talking about that raising this as an issue or maybe as a positive things because... Uh, because you may have more experience with the uh, with skincare product and try different skincare products and met pe with people who were maybe reluctant to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I mean, generally, if I've asked anyone, some very few men have said when I say, "Oh, how would you feel about a, you know knowing a woman founded this brand that's for men?" Some few men have said, "Oh, I would feel more comfortable if a man had started because he would know my skin, and I would wonder mm. the motivations for a woman starting." A men's brand like why would she be doing that mm -hmm. um, but the others have said oh you know um, yeah it, it doesn't bother me and and yeah it doesn't make a difference although you have to keep into account like a bias between you don't want to have cognitive dissonance like you believe you're a woke um, open-minded liberal man and so how could you possibly say that that would bother you but maybe in practice I mean I don't know mm. um, but for now, you, you never had the situation where anyone raised it. It's more your own internal discussion yeah. about how you position yourself, but it's not something... That I think the, the, it's the through. only... Again, I don't think it'll be a barrier for someone buying from me if they like the product and they mm -hmm. like the brand, but it's more just the fact that it's a question at the beginning of every conversation when, some, when I meet someone new, like, oh, why are men skincare? And so you sort of feel... You know you're doing something that's perceived to be different, otherwise there would be no need. It's like... But it's good. I mean, if it's you're true. doing like everyone else, it, it's that's not true. really engaging or anything. Yeah. I think maybe you wonder if... Yeah, I guess, yeah, that, that's very true. It's something different, um, but then on your bad days, you wonder like, oh, is there something... Do they think there's something wrong with this? And is that why they're yeah. asking? Is it a judgment or is it just a curious question? Um, and that's, I think, the... Yeah. yeah. If it's a curious question, that's great. Um, when it's the judgment part, then you think, okay, I need to change the way I look so I look more at this, or you know, um, yeah. And uh, what's uh, what's next for you uh, now to to bring the uh, this adventure to the next step? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, 
So right now we have one product, and I think Eddie yeah had asked about the certification. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. it's just a bit of a process. Um, and so yeah, the next I, I would like to get to three to five SKUs. Um, so it's a bit of a collection. Um, I'm trying really hard to be quite intentional about the the branding, mm-hmm. so that it might not be that oh it's just a face wash or face scrub and oil and an eye serum. Like maybe if I'm thinking. You know, many people have issues with sleep, for example, or even stress. If maybe a product would be better as like an eye mask or an oily rub on the bottom of your feet. Um, so I'm also trying to strike the balance between not just swapping out functional products a guy already uses. So an oil for the face and beard is not a functional switch because most men don't use that already. But mm-hmm. a deodorant swap would be like instead of buying yeah. the Shore or the Axe that you buy or Old Spice, you would buy this you know natural deodorant. So trying to find. It's like the product development strategy takes up more of my brain space than the actual <laughs> making because I'm I, I think about what would be the most useful and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously, yeah, raising some money to give me some runway to keep doing this um, and being a bit more uh, like uh, what is uh, yeah, getting into publications and and sort of getting the name out there a bit more than right now. Mm-hmm. I've just been focused on brand building. Yeah. Um, in a very really, really small like petri dish of of a universe <laughs> and eventually like trying to amplify it. Have you started pitching your, your idea to some investors for that? No, I've made a deck and I've met with a couple of like incubator type ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about raising money, uh, like a substantial amount. I think a Kickstarter of, you know, 30 to 50,000 pounds is fine for right now. Um, uh, have you already had some capital uh, to start with or have you not bootstrapped a, bit, bootstrapped the entire Yeah, process? bootstrapped. I haven't put in, I put less than 6,000 pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, which is not a lot. I mean, that's great that you yeah. managed to keep it a uh, really small investment, even though that's a physical product. Because when we yeah. think about a physical product, lots of people think about you need to have a huge capital to start with to yeah. actually be able to uh, to have a huge stock and to be ready, but you don't. So that's the thing. I think it depends on your approach. So it's not like crazy bootstrapping for this type of product, but... Um, one thing is, for this industry, there's a lot of high minimum order quantities. So if you want to order a, like this bottle, for example, at a super, super cheap price, or even get this like frosted, for example, because it's a, it's a custom type, type, you need at least five or 10,000 bottles. So I've like, you know, used packaging that I can get in smaller quantities, which mm-hmm. I use less money, even though the unit cost is higher, so I can test out. Um, so it's a fine balance between like being like, oh, I can't believe I spent 50p on a bottle when it should cost five, mm. but I only got 50 because I'm still testing and making sure that, you know, it fits in the guy's hand and, you know, he likes the way the cap looks and things like that. And then eventually the unit cost will go way down because I'll order in yeah. bulk. Once you know exactly what your customer wants, once yeah. you've done this enough testing, you can then uh, look to decrease this kind of cost. Exactly. And also you, you talk about having some uh, uh, packaging that you can recycle and something yeah. else. So you can also think about that in the next iteration, once your audience is already uh, buying your, your yeah. product. Yeah, and it is, you know, I mean, refillable is amazing and would be really great mm-hmm. in some companies. There's a deodorant company, I'm forgetting the name now, that does it. But then the, and there's a, a platform called Loop. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Um, I think it's with Unilever, maybe P&G, but it, it's with all the big um, FMCG companies and, and they Loop goes around and collects your finished packaging. So for, again, same thing with a smaller brand. Like it's it's a bit difficult to coordinate big efforts of you know sending someone a refill. What do you send them the refill thing? And it's probably going to be plastic. Is that a waste? Um, and then there's safety concerns. If I just sent you the oil and you had to pour it in, what if it got contaminated? You'd blame me if you broke out. So mm. there's all these different considerations. But I think like the things that an entrepreneur chooses to keep chooses to keep in mind will determine their strategy and what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, so it doesn't mean that. This is perfect from the sustainability angle, but it's on my mind, and so or it's on the company's mind, so it will be a part of the next iteration. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you also mentioned at some point looking for capital and looking at accelerator, but you are also a solo founder. Yeah. And the, um, for now, the um, programs that you've seen, do they have any requirements? Uh, because I know lots of people that struggle in the situation where they are solo funders. Mm. They want to accelerate the business, but they uh, also don't want to go with someone who is just happened to be here at this day. You know, they want to uh, uh, potentially have some new co-founders, but mm-hmm. they don't want to rush anything because they don't have the right person right now. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, they want to go through an accelerator, but accelerator don't want solo funders. Yeah. So they're stuck in this situation. 
Yeah, that's a really, really good question. I'm stuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. I mean, my partner helps out. He has a full time job, so he helps out a little bit. So, for the purpose of like getting into an accelerator, I have him on paper mm-hmm. a little bit to say that I have support. Um, I more want a co founder just because I think. I mean, you haven't asked this yet, but I think the biggest struggle is like keeping your energy going on a daily basis and being committed, not really to your idea, but being believing in yourself and kind of thinking you can even do this. And is this a waste of your time? Is this a good use of your time? Like, you, and it's good to have also someone to contribute your idea when you're yes. on your own. You're, you're overthinking some aspect yes. and, and you shouldn't. So it's good to have just someone sometime who says, oh, we don't really care about that or we should actually think about this. Yeah, or 100%. Just have it and go on. Yeah, and actually I, I um, got into entrepreneurs first and was going to do that. And their big oh, focus right. is on co-founders and mm-hmm. you know and curating this community to, for people to find co-founders. So I, I 100% agree with like the philosophy or the, the concept it's mm-hmm. just practically how do you how do you go about finding somebody um, I don't have much to offer at the moment like the company just started so it's, you know I don't have uh, I mean I could promise equity but I don't know yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot um, to yeah. work through um, and I haven't it's also fine putting the energy into doing that versus mm-hmm. running the business feels a bit difficult sometimes um, but yeah I think definitely at some point like not just I will need help to make the business run but I would want support yeah. and I would want um, somebody who and even just to grow it's it's just healthy to have someone you can just rely on to go to, to help you go to the next step yeah have different skills bring something to yeah the company definitely so you got accepted into entrepreneur um, entrepreneurs first right? yes before this whole situation when yeah. I was like deeply in tech yeah yeah okay but are you are you going to be part of one of the upcoming call? No, I didn't okay. have the visa in time, this okay. year one. And then I think I, I'm i not sure that I am the best person to be like doing a super deep tech AI machine learning type startup. Like I but think you already have your, your startup. So yeah, yeah, but if I left yeah. this and oh, okay. one or something. I, I, again, I think there's like definitely elements of tech that can help propel my business. So mm-hmm. um, like we talked about, like, uh, when you're super e-commerce heavy and it's a digitally native brand, there's like tons of analytics, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I don't want, I want that just to be a part of the business. I don't want to have that to be the, the point of the business. Um, so yes. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just tricky. It's like hard to say that you don't like super want to do tech right now because everyone's doing tech. And no, it's the right. cool but, thing. But and you are building a, a, an e-commerce solution. Yeah. And you are focusing on your products. So you can't really just follow every trend or everything that you're yeah. interested in. I, mean, I also think everybody uses things that don't necessarily need to have tech, like this cup of water or tea. Like it doesn't need to be built in a machine that tells mm. you exactly the temperature. Like I also really enjoy a lot of, I guess, analog activities or habits and mm-hmm. I, I again I don't think that either is good or bad but um, I think there's space to like revolutionize or innovate on something that um, is a not really tech mm-hmm. like this is not a tech product for you and it never will be hopefully yeah. um, I might and, and there is a platform where you can buy but you, you don't need to develop right, especially right now yeah like you're just getting started you need to develop your audience your customer base uh, your brand yeah. and everything else but not necessarily adding some machine learning to your website. Yeah, I mean, a lot of... Um, habits or anything. It's funny because the biggest, one of the biggest trends in skincare is actually AI um, and using apps to determine your skin type. And then like yeah, Neutrogena right. has an app um, mm-hmm. and then you can use that to inform um, what type of skincare to use. I've never honestly tried that, but for men specifically, like it's education. Like it doesn't matter how fancy the stuff is. If they're not going to use it, then mm. it doesn't really matter. So... To me, like, there's still a basic level of understanding that we need before you, like, spend a ton of money getting your skin tested to figure out what products you need, then spending, like, hundreds of pounds getting the actual products. Um, You need first to convince your own audience, which are uh, men. um, I also think you can get very similar results without going down that route. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, that, again, I believe in plant-based stuff, but, uh, yeah, I don't think you need to go down the super, super clinical route if you, if your skin issues could be addressed with um, these types of products. Okay, um, just uh, uh, as we are, as it's already uh, noon, if anyone wants to ask some question to Safia, please feel free to do it on the, on the chat. I see this, the chat has been a bit active. Um, thank you, uh, Shift Flat. Oh, I need to get this closer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chief Tattoo Edo Fisser. 
Am I pronouncing? I'm, I'm certainly pronouncing it really <laughs> wrong. Um, that have been answering a few questions and uh, say at some point that uh, uh, you may be overlooking your own interpretation of what you're doing. So I think it's, it was when we are we're talking about uh, gender and the fact mm. that a woman um, talking to an audience of men. Um, it was he or she was saying other people are going to play of it. If you are thinking about the gender issue in the conversation, it's going to be an issue in that conversation when it otherwise wouldn't be. Mm. I'm not sure exactly what you meant here, uh, but uh, um, yeah, I agree. And, and as we said, it, it was more something about you positioning yeah. yourself more than um, the voice for for the content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but that's interesting. But, like, yeah. I, yeah. Um, Thank you. So yeah, um, so, if, so if you have any more question um, or want to just jump in the chat, feel free to do so. Any feedback, obviously, is super welcome. I'm still really early, um, but trying to use as much feedback in the day as possible. Um, so um, and then let's uh, let's continue for a while. Um, is there anything because? Potentially, uh, we have some people here that are aspiring entrepreneurs. Is there anything that uh, you wish you'd know or that you're learning right now and you think it's important to, uh, uh, to share with, uh, with aspiring entrepreneurs? Any tips, tricks? Um, um, so just to remind, you, you've been running Talisman for now three months, right? Yeah, three, four. Three, four months. Mm-hmm. So it's still brand new. So Super you're still new. on this curve where you're just trying, iterating, um, and, and just learning on the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, one, one that comes to mind, which you hear probably from everyone, but it really is true, is you don't actually know much until you start. So I spent, I did spend some time in my last, while I was working at my last job, working on a deck. I was really proud of it and had all like, the, you know, it was almost like a pitch deck, like it had the market size and you know what I was going to do and the USP of my brand. Um, and that was before I even developed a product and like really, really started even talking to actual people. And you really don't know anything until you start. Mm-hmm. And it's partially, I think, because you also don't put yourself on the line until you start. Like building yeah. a deck was like fun and I would like... But it's just for you. Yeah, and, and I would tell people like, oh, I have a deck and I feel so <laughs> proud of myself. And it, I mean, there's nothing to feel really that, you know. So, so I think, yeah, un- until you actually like... And by start, I m- maybe I mean what I was saying earlier about like putting yourself out there in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable. Can you really like feel like you fully invested and actually do it? Mm-hmm. Um, so I th- yeah, I think the the amount of learning I've gotten from actually doing it versus thinking about it and having this deck is it, there's a big difference. Um, so I would say if you're thinking about it, like you don't have to quit your job or anything, but start in a way that um, you've started, and mm-hmm. it's not just the thinking about starting if that makes sense. Because sometimes you can get tricked by thinking yeah. you've started but you haven't kind of uh, yeah if that it, makes sense. It, there is no date where you're actually starting being in the business yeah you, I think for lots of people it's when you start talking about it to people like yeah. being very open yeah and not just say oh I'm building something but actually say oh I'm building this yes uh, yes but then it depends on everyone uh, for some people it might just be the day you buy the uh, uh, the website yeah or yeah you find that's true really Twitter yeah um Okay, um, we uh, we have some questions here. So, um, Chief Tattooed Officer, I think that's the right. <laughs> okay. I uh, just said I'm a guy, and I know a lot more about women's skin care, skin care than men's. Largely, women don't demand men have rigorous skin care pr- routine, and I don't particularly see the need for it without that. How are you approaching that to try and carve out a market segment? That's a good question. Yes. Can you repeat the last part? Women. He doesn't feel that women are. So I think to summarize, um, uh, he knows a lot about women mm-hmm. skincare, and uh, uh, but men generally don't know much and don't have a routine already. So how do you market a product that are for men that are not um, that don't really see a need for it right now because they don't have anything? It's not like you're bringing some men using an existing product to another product. Yeah. But you're actually trying to convince some men that. Yeah. Yeah, it might be good for you to use some product. Yeah, yeah, that's a super good question. Um, <clears throat> initially, my target audience was the men who are already interested in skincare or using products. And so this was, you know, to prove that I'm better than what you're using. And then you switch to mine. And obviously, there's a huge... The, the, the larger portion of the market is the men who don't use anything. 
Um, obviously, as you probably know, beard care is the entry point into skincare for a lot of men. So once they start feeling that their face is itchy or that, you know, it's rough and the skin under it is kind of uh, irritated, then they want to use something to take care of their beard and then they can, you can educate them on why it's important to take care of the rest of their face. Um, so my target, um, consumer is actually a man and both men and women. Um, so for women, it's giving them something to buy for their partners or for their guy friend. Um, and the education might come through her. So women tend to incorporate skincare into the routine, as you kind of mentioned. Um, and often they encourage their partner friend, whoever to do it. Or, you know, honestly, in, in, um, I've spoken to many gay couples, um, and it's often one partner is, uh, very into skincare and the other isn't. Um, so the one who is tries to encourage the one who isn't. Um, but yeah, anyway, being able to offer them products that were made for just them. So as I mentioned, I'm not the only brand doing this, obviously. Um, and I think men like to receive something that was for them. And women also like to gift something that was specifically designed for the person they're gifting it to. Um, but the main main thing is around education. So, so, <coughs> so many men are still learning about the benefit of facial oils, for example, and how even if you have oily skin, actually an oil that's high in linoleic acid can help balance out your sebum production and it actually can be really good for your skin rather than just make it more greasy, which that's a, a common misperception. Um, so the education front, I think I am personally uh, with, with blog writing, with my Instagram, with partnering with other experts, trying to uh, push that a bit forward that usually comes with that you need to invest a ton of money into education which is why as an investment model like that's not particularly attractive at the moment um, but yeah mainly education working through um, their partners or females in their life who already have a skincare routine um, and then the other thing is really with trying to push more of a lifestyle approach about taking care of yourself being more comfortable in your own skin um, I think it's trying to play to like the emotional sort of uh, side of this rather than it just being functional and problem solving um, and hopefully like hit home somewhere there for men. Sorry, that's a very long way to answer, <laughs> but it's a very good question. Uh, it is. Um, Eddie also asked about what you use to build your shop. Um, so I guess what kind of tools you're using to get people to buy online? Oh, I use a Shopify site. Is that okay. okay shop so that's uh, what uh, a shift tattooed officer said but I, i'm not sure if he was talking about his own store if he has a store or about yours and if it's visible or not but okay it should be fine oh yeah so i use shopify if, if that's what you meant to, to build the site um and then i've tried to like customize a tiny bit of it um and yeah have like google analytics and facebook pixel um attached and instagram just get, uh, open the ability to buy on their right, platform yes. as well they take a big percentage though um <laughs> so let's see and yeah, and I, I'm talking to, I have one wholesale partner in Pakistan and I'm talking to other brands in the UK because I think it's really important to touch and feel the product. And mm -hmm. at the moment, I don't want to open any stores for myself. We're touching it. Yeah, we've got the product it. here. I, I love it. I, I really oh, like it. Oh, thank you. Did they have uh, any uh, product on it at some point? Like if I open it and smell it, will it be um, the smell of the product? Maybe. I have some samples also I can give you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, was I bring the empty bottle because, because <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah if you have some birds I'd love to just yeah it. I love the smell of uh, uh, main care product oh really um, yeah sometimes it's very strong but uh, when it's a plant-based product it's quite often a very uh, very nice smell yeah really and I've also made some blends with an aromatherapist in India using like a bit more like exotic essential oils and okay um, yeah you also learn a lot more like the aromatherapy industry they, or the fragrance market, they say, was sort of like invented in France. Um, and that's and because lavender is really popular in France or really common, lavender is a scent that everybody knows, but it's not necessarily because it's the most grown <clears throat> in the world. It's because that's like where fragrance, the fragrance <laughs> industry came from. So it's super interesting to learn it's about like... Vast French people who put lavender everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like very interesting. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I don't know if that answered the question, but feel free to... Tell yeah, me I, think, uh, I, I think it does. Um, I don't see any new question for now. So um, is there any resource uh, you would like to share? So just to say, um, you mentioned a few websites, a few uh, things people can check out. So I'm going to just add it into the, uh, uh, the description of the uh, YouTube channel um, once the video will be up. Um, I'll try to, to find all the links you mentioned sure. and to add them. 
But uh, is there any other resources, anything you're reading at the moment, or any groups, networking, or anything that uh, uh, you find very helpful? Yeah, so um, I watch a lot of interviews on Recode, <coughs> sorry, Recode Commerce um, mm -hmm. on YouTube. I listen to a lot of podcasts, obviously. There's one called How I Built This. Sorry. I can give you more what you're <coughs> Sure. Thank you. Um, yes, I listen to How I Built This, which is, again, bigger companies, but it can be inspiring. I'm reading a book. I read a lot of books on consumer behavior and, mm -hmm. like, consumer psychology. I find that really interesting. Okay. <coughs> um, resources, otherwise. I mean, I think it's okay to try out everything, so I tried out a lot of, um, social media planning platforms like Planoly, Preview, Later, um, a bunch of other ones, and now I use a combination of later and preview. I edit mm -hmm. my photos in preview and load them on later. Um, PR is still something I haven't quite invested time into. I think it's really important. Um, there's a lot of like, obviously you can hire a PR agency. Um, I don't have the funds yeah. for that right now. I think it's one or, or it's two thousand pounds ish a month. So if I think if people have the budget for that, it's a great great thing to do yeah but you are you still iterating with your product uh, exactly it, it doesn't necessarily make sense to invest on it yeah. right now yeah. yeah um and i think yeah setting up google alerts for any and everything related to your brand mm -hmm. that's also really helped so i put random stuff like gillette i mean things that yeah obviously men's skincare grooming trends this and that but mm -hmm. every day then i get you know then i often like instantly know about this newest article about the topic of interest so that's my way of keeping pulse on the industry mm. I, I'm very open to suggestions I, I like to, um, learning other ways um, okay so we have more question here I'm going to start with the uh, Edis question because it's d directly related to what you just said he asked about uh, the benefits of a PR um, agency um, so I don't know if you if you want to get that uh, yeah so um, to word, if you prefer. basically I think most of us I would argue think social media is enough like if you do it right and if you have enough ads on Instagram and you have enough uh, yeah, budget for Facebook ads also um, you can kind of do it on your own but um, at least the PR agencies that I've spoken to they have connections to journalists bloggers they get you into magazines so Esquire actually approached me uh, when I just started like in December and they're like oh we would love to feature you in our magazine and I in the print version not digital um, and I was like very flattered and really excited because like, oh, they chose me to be in it and it felt really cool. But actually, you know, they obviously are charging and it's not that cheap. I think they quoted a thousand. Does it, ch it charge you to, to feature in a... Well, it's an ad. It's not a feature. Oh, okay. Which again, I thought still like cool. But the thing is that could be like a tiny little photo of your thing in the back yeah. of the magazine. So you're not... I think it's like understanding how you can convert your ad spend into sales and that will not... That's... I, but, yeah, that's something like you can do in house, um, especially as no one knows better your customer as you do. Um, I, w I will add to that that uh, uh, I think PR agencies are doing a great job, but it's good when you want to really give a big push at some point because it's very expensive to have a retainer with a PR agency. Yeah. So when you're a small business, I think it's very useful when you're about to launch or to be to do a big launch for your product, or when you have a a big campaign like big campaign style marketing yeah. um, that you're launching otherwise I think on a daily basis there are m lots of things that you can do on your own definitely and that are better to do on your own because yeah. it's your own audience so yeah. especially when you're small you know them you know who are your customers you know who to talk to them yeah um, I think maybe yeah like if you have a launch event um, I mean uh, if you have relationships with um, like people at magazines again this is for a consumer product I think for a tech product I actually would apply to a tech that it's like all those um, tech platforms that also have people on their editing team and things like that but if they have a contact they can mail your product or they can get in touch directly and maybe have a higher chance of the person responding or featuring you again you could hustle that on your own and just super stalk them mm -hmm. on LinkedIn and you know you could find ways to write emails that are better worded and get better response rates but the 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 value add that I've heard from PR agencies, again, I've never used one, is that they can get in front of those contacts a bit better um, and their reach is a lot wider than my, my network would be, which makes sense. It's just... Not the job. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, they, they really come with their own... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and you just have to weigh if it's worth it list. for you. And then the other thing I'll say is, um, so for the Esquire example, like, that was tricky for me because I've never been approached by a magazine like that before. I thought even being 
featured again I paid for it which I didn't do in the back of the magazine a teeny little thing would I could still a social proof say oh, I was featured in Esquire mm-hmm. so I think there's a fine balance between paying for social proof and like it's, it not being worth the money um, and so now I think a lot of more people know that when you're featured in a magazine if you paid for it it's not as uh, impressive I suppose like you didn't actually mm-hmm. achieve anything that crazy but it again, can give you uh, more visibility to your audience so it depends I think it's, it's a well, balance we're not going to see this teeny little picture of me at the end of the magazine is the the argument um, but on my Instagram if they see that I was in it will they buy I mean yeah I think mm-hmm. th- there's different touch points for social proofing and just brand building and then there's sales and you have to separate the two so that magazine ad will not have generated me any sales it would just be brand building which will work towards an eventual sale um, but yeah just being aware of that I think was important for me to realize um, Chief Tattooed Officer just uh, replied to that saying that uh, and also benefits of a PR agency is unless you have a you are native to a particular social platform they're going to help you navigate the culture of the platform you're unfamiliar with this is true I mean it depends on everyone's needs and everyone's stage mm-hmm. um, if you're if you're uh, already a big fan of a platform and you're using it but you think that uh, your, your audience will be in another platform yeah definitely having someone either a consultant someone in-house or a PR agency mm-hmm. would be helpful um, I think uh, and he says, I think this podcast itself is a good example. Um, but sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, why not? <laughs> <laughs> not sure, I guess. I'll see how many Instagram it. followers I get from this later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he also asked more questions earlier, so I'm going to jump on sure. that. He, he asked, do you plan on differentiating market segments? The focus on skincare with natural products doesn't particularly appeal to a large number of men. It's a subset of men that are into the organic natural market. And he says, then I am in the does not appeal group, so I am interested in any plans to any plans to try marketing to a broader, less liberal market. Mm. Uh, sorry, marketing skincare products to that market or any products? Well, I think uh, um, the question is about the uh, uh, natural product skincare um, so the, the, the big question is, do you plan on differentiating market segment? But I think it's, it, there is a, a difference between the market segment and the uh, um, narrative around natural products. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, it's something different. You, you, you can keep your, your market segment and your, your audience target, but in the same time, uh, change the narrative along the way from being really heavily on the uh, plant-based to uh, more being uh, focused on the brand itself mm. and then the benefit of the brand is that it's for the, it's plan based uh, yeah I I, yeah here. definitely I think um, it's tricky even in like I've been making some changes to my website and meeting with people it's when you have one product which I at the moment only have um, it's tricky to advertise the brand really heavily on the website for example because I just have one product and so I mentioned Native Deodorant earlier. Their website, even though they have other products and they've been bought by P&G for $100 million, when you click shop, shop products or shop now, it takes you just to the deodorant. You have to like navigate the site to look at their toothpaste. And so similarly, um, uh, right now I'm pushing a product because that's... Uh, and maybe I'm, I'm... Since you're a guy, I would love to know what you think. Um, on the website, men want to buy the product, whereas maybe on Instagram, it's more brand building and learning about it. Um, I think the focus of the brand will be like taking care of yourself as a man so you can better take care of others. And so how I sort of make that message resonate with people, um, I would love it if I could get as many people to sort of believe in that message, but um, the, the way, so, so the way in which I do that might change and I might iterate mm-hmm. and, you know, yeah, might have many different types of products, but um, I, I personally, that message really resonates with me and with a lot of people that I've spoken to. So I would love any sort of, uh, I guess, yeah, feedback on mm-hmm. ways in which you think I could make that message resonate. But um, I guess it's it's hard if, if somebody doesn't believe that, then, then I'm not sure how, yeah. Well, again, you're just three months old. So um, I guess... It's about finding what works right now for your audience, mm-hmm. but for a very small audience, yeah, and then yeah. expand it. So I guess you'll see when you when you will be expanding, 
and th- targeting a more broader audience what what you'll be doing mm-hmm. um that's very very interesting question and thank you very much um i think we're, we are going to wrap it up um it's been quite a while we've been chatting um just i would like to say thank you uh to uh, chief tattooed officer um that's a very uh, interesting question you asked and um uh you also say Oh, you added even more. You also said that, uh, yes, this podcast is a good example because just chatting on Twitch has a culture that is widely different from the rest of Twitch, which is uh, uh, totally true. And here we are also experimenting because, mm. as I said, we are bringing together two worlds. We don't necessarily have lots of podcast formats um, on Twitch, even if it's coming slightly um, and not that much business discussion. But I think this platform has so much potential. So... It was giving a try, but uh, again, we'll be experimenting, so we'll see. Um, I think I see, I see, uh, there are even a, a more question here, but uh, uh, it's time to wrap it up. So if people have more questions or want to give you any feedback or chat please, further, please. where can they reach out to you? Do yeah. you have a, a, a contact form on your website? I do, yeah. There's a contact us on the website, which is mrtalisman.com, or um, if you go to Instagram, at Talisman Skincare and you send me a message from there I check it quite frequently and respond to every message so you um, that's good well I have to now I think <laughs> I like I have, it's tough to yes. reach out to someone they don't reply and they're a small <laughs> brand you're like what you're not even doing that right so um yeah please reach out and yeah share any feedback and thoughts um I'm still growing and learning a ton uh, making tons of mistakes but hopefully I'll keep doing that so I keep moving otherwise yeah I'll just stay stuck <laughs> Well, uh, please do check out Safia's website, yes. uh, Mr. Talisman, and um, her Instagram. And uh, well, on my end, I am a big fan of Twitter. So my thing yes. is Twitter. So I'll make sure to post your links uh, uh, on Twitter, but also in the YouTube video, in the description of the channel. I will add all the links you mentioned, including your Instagram and your website. You. Um, I would like to thank you, everyone, for being with us today. In two weeks, we are going to be live again uh, with another guest. And this guest is quite special because he's one of my friends. Um, i known him for quite a while. But also, he's in the chat right now. So I didn't want to necessarily announce it ASAP, but because he's here and he has been very active this morning and everything, uh, we'll have Eddie Jaoud um, in two weeks. So be ready to ask him lots of questions because Eddie has a very um, interesting journey, uh, background, and uh, we'll be talking about diversity, about tech, about open source code. So be sure to join us. And um, that's it for us. So um, again, we are very active on Twitter. So please do check out the Twitter. And if you have suggestions, question or anything, you can reach out. Um, this is the first episode, so we'll be iterating, we'll be trying to uh, improve and see what we could do to do more and to do better next time. So yeah, any suggestion would be very helpful. And um, that's it for now. So thank you very much for joining us today. This was the, uh, that was the first episode of Entrepreneurs Playing Games. And I really hope to see you in two weeks. Um, I'll be staying on the chat for a while so we can stay online for a while but uh yeah thanks everyone thank, thank you. you very much nice Safia. to meet you all of course it was amazing to have you yeah same here this was really lovely and i'll be checking up on you in the coming months to see all you're going and, <laughs> yeah. and you know like what talisman became yeah. in the coming months and uh, maybe at some point we can do some kind of follow-up interview sure I would or, love or that. something yeah but keep me in the in the loop yes. and uh, if you need anything if i can be of any help or if you have some ask or anything just let me know okay perfect Thank Thank you, you. everyone. Have a great weekend and we'll see you in two weeks. Cheers.